All set. Oh, hey, Lauren. You found something already. That was quick. Yeah, it didn't take me too long. I know my brother loves these things. That'll be 10.59. Oh, shoot, Gary. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about the tax. I'm just going to have to go find something else. How much do you have? $10. It's all right. Let you have it for 10 bucks. Are you sure, Gary? Absolutely. Thank you so much. I know my brother's going to love this. Here you go. Thanks. See you later, Gary. Hey, have a safe walk home. I will. Will I see you on Sunday? Yeah, I'll see you there. Oh, hey there, Neil. What have we got here? Did you see this? What is it? Read it! Tolman Toys, a 10,000 square foot toy paradise coming this fall to Cargo Street. Do they mean this Cargo Street? The very same. In fact, they're renovating the abandoned warehouse across the street. We're talking real competition for you, Gary. Yeah, it looks that way. What are you going to do about it? I don't know if there's much I really can do, other than just put it in God's hands. Right. Well, I gotta get going. I just came by to give you a heads up on that. All right, Neil. Well, thanks for letting me know. I'll see you around. You too. Take care. remodeling that building already. Hmm. Hey, do you have a few minutes to stop in before your appointment? No, I better run before I'm late. All right, well, I'll see you later, hon. Bye, hon. Have a good day. You too. Welcome. Is there anything I can help you find today? No, I'm just looking. All right. It's a rather sorry selection of toys you have here. I'm sorry you think that. Is there something specific that you're looking for? If I don't have it out here, I might have it in the back. All right, let me get to the point. You know that store that's opening up across the street? Um, uh, well, yeah. I'm the owner of that store, Mr. Tolman. Oh, well, it's good to meet you. I'm Gary. Who are you kidding? You're just as excited to see me as I am to see you. Let's get something straight here, pal. You and I are competition. We're not going to be buddies. Mr. Tolman. I know that we're competition, but that doesn't mean we can't get along on a professional level. Aren't you the noble one? I didn't come here to make friends with you. Then why did you come here? Let me be blunt with you. I came here to size up the store and the owner who's going to be the thorn in my side. Well, I think I said all I need to say for now. Oh, there is one other thing. If I were you, I'd start looking for a new location. Judging by the store of yours, you don't stand a chance when my store opens next week. Good day. Excuse me a minute. 
I pity that girl. Oh man, that was close. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I think you girls forgot your volleyball. Who are you? I'm Mr. Tolman. I own this store. Oh, well, we're really sorry for hating the volleyball around. We didn't think it was going to fly over the store. Did you see the sign over there that says, Please try me out? No. And why were you smacking it around in the first place? We were just trying to have fun. Honestly, we didn't intend to cause any trouble. Well, it has caused trouble. And quite frankly, I don't like troublemakers in my store. So here's how it's going to be. I want you girls out of here. And don't come back unless your parents are with you. All right, we're going. Come on, Megan. How would you like to make some real money? Hey Frank, come here a minute. things up here. Why don't you go tidy up my office? Yes, sir. Uh, so, what do you want us to do with the boxes from the other place? Throw them in that dumpster. I'll go get you the money I promised you. Sounds good. do, so be it. Of course, that means we're going to lose our jobs. Yeah, but did you happen to see how much money he paid us to do that? I noticed. Sounds like you're getting cold feet on me. I trust you to keep your mouth shut on this, right? Yeah. the shipment was delivered. Well, I didn't receive it, and I know I didn't sign for it, so your records must be wrong. Because we need that shipment before Christmas. Yeah, all right. I'll call you back tomorrow. <laughs> Delivery company, huh? Yeah, and apparently there's been some sort of mix-up, because they're telling me that we received that shipment from the other day, which we haven't, and now they're telling me that I signed for it. Well, it sounds like they better get their act together. I mean, they probably delivered our shipment to somewhere else. Well, they have my signature. Yeah, that's strange, isn't it? Well, I hope they can clear this up soon. I don't know what we're going to do if we don't have that product before Christmas. You know what? It was probably all just a misunderstanding. <laughs> and everything will be worked out in a couple of days. Well, I hope you're right. Well, I'm going to head off to bed. I'm pretty exhausted. I'll be right behind you in a couple minutes. All right. Good night. Good night. cheerful mood this morning? Well, I have reason to be 
cheerful this morning. And why is that? I'll give you one hint. Do you remember the other day when you were telling me how excited you were to be a daddy? Yeah. Well? You're pregnant? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I know. Hi, Scarlett. Hey guys, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Well, the business end of things has certainly been better, but we'd... Oh, excuse me a minute. Well, I do have Welcome to answer. Gary's Toy Shop. Hello. Is there anything I can help you find today? No, I'm just looking, thank you. All right, well, I'll just be chatting away over there. Uh, feel free to interrupt me or ask my wife over there if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah, definitely, let me know. So anyway, Scarlett, what brings you by today? What, can I stop by and just say hi to my friends? Is that what brings you in? No. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is. Oh, you know I love you guys, but I actually am on a mission today. There are a couple dolls I'm looking to get my daughter for Christmas. Oh yeah? Which ones? I'm sure you're familiar with the popular Bambi dolls, right? Yeah. Well, I'm looking for brain surgeon Bambi and hydro fuel cell engineer Bambi. <laughs> oh, Scar. Well, you're on a roll today. No, seriously, which ones you looking for? I'm looking for brain surgeon Bambi and hydro fuel cell engineer Bambi. Okay, whatever happened to the like middle school teacher Bambi or uh, short order fry cook Bambi? Were those any better? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> the kids love them though. Mm -hmm. So I guess you don't have them then. You know, I did order some of the new sets. But that shipment we were supposed to receive a few weeks ago still hasn't arrived. That's a shame. I was hoping to get those for my daughter today. I guess I'll have to keep shopping then. Oh, I'm sorry, Scarlett. I really wish I had them here. That's OK. I'm going to get going and see if I can find them. But if I don't see you two beforehand, you have a Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks. You too, Scarlett. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Scarlett. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation about those dolls. Do you know where I can get them? Matter of fact, I do. Across the street at Toman Toys, they had a huge oh. selection. And I think I saw that um, hydro fuel whatever doll. <laughs> They're not very easy to remember, are they? No. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go over and check it out right now. Thank you for telling me. Oh, my pleasure. I'm glad I could help. Have a good day. Merry Christmas. You too. We're gonna be okay, right? You mean the shop? Yeah. I sure do hope so. It's actually happening. You're closing shop? Yeah, it's true. It's hard to believe, but we've got no other choice. What happened? I mean, you always seem to have a great clientele of loyal customers. There were several factors. The biggest one that drove people away, and I, I think I've discussed some of this with you, was that whole shipment debacle. I mean, I didn't resolve that whole thing till after Christmas, but by then the damage was already done. So what was the deal with that? Apparently, one of their delivery guys forged my signature and did who knows what with the shipment. 
He had an accomplice that helped, and the two of them were fired. That's about as much as I know. Other than that, it's still a mystery as to why they did it. Wow, that really is unfortunate. Yeah, you're telling me. So what are you going to do now? Look for work? Pray for God's direction? You really think God's looking out for you? Well, yeah. I haven't stopped believing that. I mean, I have no idea what he's doing, but he's doing something. You always told me God is a loving God, but letting this happen to you doesn't quite fit into your view of things. God is loving. But it doesn't mean we always know what he's doing or why. Sure, Gary. Well, I'm gonna head out. Um, just wanted to stop by before you got everything packed up and, and wish you luck. Oh, thanks for coming by, Neil. You've always been a great friend and a loyal customer. My pleasure. I'll see you around, okay? Absolutely. I'll give you a call. We'll get together sometime soon. Sounds good. Take care, Gary. You too, Neil. It's done. Our shop is officially closed. Got it all packed up, huh? Oh, honey, I wish I could have been there to help you. No, you've been helping out a lot here with our inventory. You're not exactly in any condition to be moving boxes. <laughs> I guess not, but at least just to keep you company. Well, I'm sure glad to have your company now. Hmm. Gary. Whatever you need, hon. I'm here. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> so what next, Susan? I wish I could tell you, hon. I just don't get it. Why did God allow this to happen? I mean, we've spent seven years building that business up and everything was going so fine with it. And then just like that, it's gone? What do you suppose God's trying to tell us? I'm just as baffled as you are, Geary. You're asking the wrong person. But you know what? We're gonna have to trust in God, right? He has all the answers. He has everything under his control, doesn't he? He does. That's very true. I'm just speaking out of frustration. I understand. We'll be all right. God will get us through this. I know. I'm just curious, has any of y'all ever had any troubles? Oh, so I'm not the only one then. It's universal, isn't it? Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So with that verse in mind, I have two questions for you. One, should we be surprised when troubles come our way? And two, should we then worry about those troubles? Let's face it, Jesus didn't mince words. He says, ye shall have tribulation. So that brings us to the bigger question. How do we respond when troubles come our way? You notice in the second part of the verse, he says, be of good cheer. So our attitude should not be one of worry, but trust that God has things under control. Now that doesn't mean we don't try to solve the problem, but we should take it to God in prayer. Let him guide. Let him take care of things that you have no control over, amen? Now let's skip down to the end of the chapter to verses 30 to 39. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. You too. Have a good week. That was a very encouraging message. It was, I agree. Hey guys. Oh, hey Lauren. Hey. Hi. Listen, I'm really sorry to hear about your shop closing. Oh, thanks, Lauren. How you dealing with it? One day at a time. I think we're doing better than last week, that's for sure. 
Well, I'm really going to miss coming to your shop. Now I'm going to be stuck going to Tolman Toys or some other place. Well, at least Tolman Toys has a nice big selection for you. Yeah, but I mean, the owner's kind of a jerk, though. Yeah, I've met the guy, and I can't say I blame you for saying that. Maybe the guy just needs more people showing him kindness. More Christians that have a loving attitude towards him. Yeah, he could really use that. Hey, if you ever run into him again, or you see the opportunity, maybe you can think of something nice you could do for him. What do you think I could do? I don't know. Get creative. God can work in small ways, just as he does in large ways. I mean, if Mr. Toma knows you're a Christian and you're trying to help him out, God can work through that. Never know. Could open up a bigger opportunity for you down the road. We are very excited about the movie. You feeling any better, hon? No, not really. Well, would you like me to get you anything from the kitchen or want another pillow or something? No, no, no. I'll be fine. Just keep going with your job search. I'm fine. All right. Well, just let me know if you need anything. Small church worship leader. Love it. I think it's the best job in the whole world. That's really great. Gary, I think the baby's coming soon. I know, Susan, you're getting close. No, no, honey. I think my water just broke. Really? I think the baby's coming. Oh, okay. Hey, it's gonna be okay. It's okay, we're gonna take you there right now. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me help you. You're my little son. I'm so happy to finally meet you. Yeah, look at your beautiful mother over there. Passed out from exhaustion. I'm sure she's relieved to have you out of her belly. I know I'm relieved for her. Oh, I'm so glad you finally arrived. And I promise. I'm gonna be the best dad that I can be to you. I may be jobless right now, but I'll find a way to provide for you and your mom. God will provide some way for me to do that. So I just confirmed your 2 o'clock appointment for tomorrow, but I was looking over your presentation for tonight, and I was wondering how many copies of this one you needed. Hold on, Michelle. I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay. Hi there, young lady. Didn't I tell you not to come back into my store without your parents? Yeah. So where are they? Oh, hey, Mom. There you are, Lauren. Are you ready to go yet? Yeah. Ah, you must be the young lady's mother. Yes, I am. And who are you? I'm Mr. Tolman. I'm the owner of the store. Oh, well, it's a very nice store you have here. Thank you. So, what business do you have with my daughter? Oh, um, nothing major. She and her friend were playing around with some of the items in the store. Well, I had to have a little talk with them, but, uh, you know, that was a year ago, in the past. The better question is, how can I be of assistance to you? Is there anything I can help you with? No, I think we're okay. All right. If you need any help, just let me know. Thanks. Okay. Man, you can see right through that guy. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's phony kindness. Let's get out of here. All right. So, what was that all about? Can we talk about it when we're out of the store? Okay. Oh, let's go over here, Mom. I want to show you something. Okay, lead the way. Check it out, they have new ones now. Awesome. Can I please get one? I said we were just coming in here to look. Look, Mom, this one's on sale. I told you we're not buying anything. Please, just this one thing. I promise I won't bug you again for the rest of the day. Oh, I get a whole day, huh? Let me see it. 
All right, I'll let you get the doll, but consider it an early Christmas present. Thanks, Mom. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, and you have a great day. I will, and you have a great day as well. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Excellent. That'll be $26.49. Oh, wait a minute. This doll's on sale for 25% off. Oh, it was last week, but that sale ended. Well, this doll still has the sale sticker on it. Oh. Uh. Well, I really can't give it to you for that price. I've been in trouble with Mr. Trollman. Tollman! Before for doing that. Oh, it's store policy. Once the sale has ended, it's final. I see. Well, I do have to ask you this, though. Why did it ring up for $25 instead of the usual $20? Oh, that's because they raised the price after the sale ended. So they ended the sale and then immediately raised the price? Yep, that's what I'm saying. Look, I don't know much about marketing, but uh, evidently raising the price hasn't hurt the sale of the dolls. Evidently the demand is still there despite the raised price. Well, you can count me out of that demand. We're gonna pass on the doll. No, Mom, please. I'm sorry, Chrissy. I'm just not gonna spend that kind of money on it. You have a good day. Thanks. Uh, you too. You know what, Chrissy? I really miss Gary's little shop. gone for so long that I finished the entire program. Hey, Susan. How'd it go at the dentist? Not bad as far as dentist appointments go. Well, great. Well, come over here for a minute. I want to show you something. Oh, you seem really excited. What's going on? You're right. I am very excited about something. And Grant's just fine. He's sleeping in his car seat. I said he's just fine. Now come over here. Okay. The concept just hit me today. I was sitting down, watching TV, and staring at this magnet on the floor, and then it hit me. What hit you? A lamp fell over and hit you in the head. <laughs> no. This idea I came up with for a new game. Okay. Now picture this. You know those yo-yos that automatically come back to you when you throw them out? Yeah. Well, imagine one of those instead of being entirely made out of plastic, one was outfitted with a magnet. I've nicknamed it the Yonetic. Now, I've developed a game around this idea. The basic concept is that each player will be given one of these Yonetics. There will be a time limit in which they have to collect as many of these little trinkets here as possible. There will be different kinds of trinkets, and each one will be worth a different number of points. The player with the most points when the time is up is the winner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I'd like to demonstrate what the action looks like. That's basically what the action looks like. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Hey, hon. 
How'd the meeting go? You sure you want to know? Of course. Why? Did it go bad? Well, I, I went in there and I did my best to show them the game. What happened? Well, I, I wrapped things up and I answered all their questions. What'd they say? They were impressed. <laughs> In fact, they loved my idea and they have agreed to give it a trial run. Gary, why did you do that? That's great, but uh, you made me think something bad happened. Why do you do that? <laughs> because I can. <laughs> You're horrible. Oh. Okay, trial run. Good. When's that going to happen? Well, first they want to work with me on the product in order to change it into something a little more marketable. Then they have yeah. to manufacture some of them. Right. Those things could take a few months before they're even able to start the trial. Oh, that's great. Gary, I hope it goes well. The reason we're having this conference is we've had a recent string of thefts. Now, this is, of course, something that all retailers deal with. But recently, we've had a high volume of these thefts. Here's your coffee, Mr. Tolman. Michelle. Yes? There's barely any cream in here. You know I like lots of cream in my coffee. Sorry, Mr. Tolman. I'll go put some in. Leave it. Just get me a new cup. All right. All right. Settle down. Continuing with what I was saying, I'm going to need all of you to be more vigilant if we're going to solve this theft problem. If you see anyone displaying suspicious activity, don't ignore it. Either pursue the person yourself or report it to one of the security personnel. Some of the things to be on the lookout for are extra baggage. Hey, hon. Hey, hon. I got the mail while I was out. Cool. Do you think when you catch your breath, you think you might be able to help me clean this apartment? Yeah, I just want to check to see what we got in the mail first. Because Grant did not take a very long nap. I got nothing done. I just want to rest for a few minutes. I just had a long run. Okay. Look what I just found in the mail. What is it? Well, open it up. See what it says. It says, Dear Mr. Sage, we're pleased to inform you that the final trial run for your product Treasure Ball was a success. The initial shipment of 1,000 units has completely sold out within our target time. We've therefore made the decision to fully invest in your product for future production and distribution. Encloses a copy of our proposed new agreement with you for your review. Also encloses a check totaling 40% of the profits in accordance with the preliminary trial contract. We offer you our sincerest congratulations on a successful trial run, and we look forward to working with you in the foreseeable future. Signed, Larry Holter, President of Fresh Idea. You sound surprised. Well, no, Gary. I liked your idea from the start. I just had no idea it would take off so quickly. Oh, no, ye of little faith. Oh, quiet. Well, shall I see what I've earned? Yeah, let's see. Wow. What are you going to do if you continue to earn money like that from that game? Well, I've been praying about it, and it's been my hope that we might be able to reopen the toy shop. Perhaps this is God's way of providing that opportunity. That would be a really good idea. Okay, Mr. Successful Inventor, do you think you could take some time now and help me clean the apartment? Oh, all right, let's clean the place up. Good morning. It's so awesome having the store open. I wasn't sure we'd ever get this opportunity again. What a great answer to prayer. Good night. Thanks for coming in. Take care. Good night. I would say that was a very successful reopening, wouldn't you? I'm very pleased with how things went today. Yep. It's not 9 o'clock yet. We have a little bit more to go. 
Well, I think we should replenish the snack table a little bit just in case any more customers come in. Good idea. Can you go in the back and get them? <laughs> sure. Wow. I thought this store was gone for good. Hi, Mr. Tolman. Gary, you almost sound unhappy to see me. Why would that be? I'm just your friendly competition from across the street. So what can I do for you, Mr. Tolman? You see, Gary, your store got beat out by mine, and that's why you had to close it down. And here you are again, about to take yourself down that same old path. You need to do yourself a favor and quit wasting your time on this shop. It's only a matter of time before my store forces you to close down again. Well, I think I'll take my chances, but thanks for your concern. What makes you think that this time is any different than the last? Well, I don't know for sure. But I trust God, and it seems he's opened up another opportunity for me here. So now you're going to bring God into this. Where was God when your store closed down the first time? He was here. I mean, if you ask me why my store closed the first time, I couldn't tell you. But I do know he allowed it for a reason. Well, if you ask me, I think God's given you a clear message to stay out of the toy business. Well, then I guess it's a good thing I'm not asking you. Look, Gary, don't expect this reopening venture of yours to last very long. You can be sure I'm going to pull out all the stops to take away any ounce of business you can muster up for yourself. I finally found the bag of goodies. We had them pretty, well, hidden. Well, I think I said all that needed to be said. Let me guess. That was Mr. Tolman? Yeah, that was him. First time we've been away from Grant for any period of time. You know, I think you're right. Mm, I hope my sister can handle it, though. Oh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Don't worry about it. We got some customers. Cool. Well, good morning, everyone. Come on in. Okay. Good to see you. Can I have everyone's attention, please? Can we all gather around over here and we'll get things started? First off, my name is Gary Sage, and I'm the inventor of the game that we're about to demonstrate. And my wife and I would like to say welcome, and thank you for coming out to this event. We thought this would be a great way to kick off this Christmas shopping season. Now, if I could get a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with the game Treasure Ball? Oh, great, so about half, good. Well. We are about to have ourselves a little demonstration and competition with the game. So without further delay, I present Treasure Ball. But guys, would you mind coming up here and give me a hand demonstrating the game? All right. Well, I think they're ready to play. You guys ready to play? Yeah. All right. Well, wait till I say go. Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Oh, I got one already. Oh, I think he's done it before. Playing the game here. Go, 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 go. Get that, get that. Oh. Get that. Oh, All right, guys. That was 
fun. Why don't you bring your treasures over here and we'll add up your points? Goodness. All right, well, it looks like we have ourselves a winner. So here's a gift certificate for you that's good towards anything in the store. Wow. How about we give these guys a round of applause? Yeah. Thank you, guys. You can go back to your families now. In a little bit, folks, we will be having a tournament, so don't forget to sign up for that as well as the raffle. But in the meantime, feel free to wander around and browse and grab some refreshments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys, so where do we want to go seeing next? I say we go to the florist. Oh, that's like 10 blocks from here. It's not that far away. Oh. Oh. Besides, do you have a better suggestion? Okay, calm down. Um, oh, I have a suggestion. Why don't we go to Mr. Tolman over at Tolman Toys? Uh, that's a bad idea. Why? Because if we go over there, he's going to bite our heads off. You know, I don't know if we want to disturb Mr. Tolman. No, Lauren, he's got a point. You remember our little encounter with Mr. Tolman, don't you? Sure I do, but I don't care about that. Let's just go see if we can bring him some Christmas cheer. Okay, but even if we do go, how is Mr. Tolman going to hear us? And besides, he's probably in his office this time of night counting his hoard of money. Um, we can sing to him through his office window. Oh. Okay, here's what we'll do. Let's put it to vote. If you guys want to go sing to Mr. Tolman, raise your hand. We, we could give him some Christmas cheer. And all opposed? Looks like singing to Mr. Tolman wins. Lauren, let's lead the way. Okay, guys, are you ready? God bless ye, Mary Jen. Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort what are you people doing outside my window? We were just caroling and your name came up and I'm sorry if we disturbed you. Of course you're disturbing me. I come to my office to work, not to hear some screechy singing outside my window. Was this your idea to come and disturb me while I'm working? Whether it was or not, I take responsibility and I'm very sorry that we bothered you. It was my idea, Mr. Tolman. You again? Yeah, listen, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you. I just thought our singing might bring you a little Christmas cheer. What makes you think I even enjoy hearing this type of music? When I come to my office, all I want is peace and quiet. Now, is that too much to ask? No. Good, I'm glad we agree. If you really want to do me a favor, don't come around here anymore. You seem to cause me trouble every time you come around. All right, you guys get out of here. I got to get back to work. Merry Christmas. shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. favorite, so I'm sure she's going to love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I like it too. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Is that just me, or have you noticed a sharp drop in store traffic in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I've noticed it too. Hmm, what could possibly be causing that? Store traffic should be increasing as we're moving closer to Christmas. Well, I have my theory, but you're not going to like it. What is it, Michelle? Well, it was only a couple months ago that Gary reopened his shop. You can't be serious. You think that little toy shack across the street is stealing my business? Look, I'm just saying it's a theory. I have heard that the game he invented is quite popular. It could be bringing a lot of business to his store. I don't care what he's invented. My store has twice the product line than his does. I mean, look at this grand store that we have here. Compare this with Gary's little toy shack. Michelle, why don't you get back with me when you have a more plausible theory? Looks like someone might be getting tired. Well, it's past his bedtime. Could you go put him down? Yeah. All right, little guy. Let's get you off the bed. Come on. Oh. All right. Okay. Oh. There we go, little buddy. <laughs> you know? I was thinking about what I said to you back when you were born. About how I would provide and God would make a way for me to do that. Well, God has gone far and above anything I imagined at the time. And I know you don't understand a word I'm saying to you right now. <laughs> but I hope someday you come to understand just what an amazing provider God is. I'll let you get some sleep. Good night, Grant. Who is it? Come in. Mr. Tillman, there's a man out here to see you. Tell him I'm busy. I did. He said it's urgent. Well, what's his name? His name is John. I think he m used to make deliveries here a while back. All right, send him in. Michelle, you can leave now. Okay. Close the door. Why are you here? <laughs> Come on now, you don't need to be so rude to your partner in crime, now do you? Keep your voice down. I'm gonna ask you again. What are you doing here? Well, Mr. Tolman, kind of struggling financially right now. Yeah? What does that have to do with me? Well, I was hoping you could help me out a little. And why exactly would I have any desire to help you out? Seeing as how I helped you out a while back. Listen to me. We had a deal before. You helped me and I paid you for it. Our dealings are over with now. So if we're through here... No, we're not through here. I don't think you want a little scandal becoming public knowledge, do you? So let me ask you again. Will you help me out financially? Hmm. So now you're going to blackmail me. 
and who's going to believe you? It's your word versus mine. I want you out of here now. And don't you ever come back. Do you understand? You can regret this, Mr. Tolman. You can be sure of that. Gentlemen, as I'm sure you're all aware, our store is struggling. Store traffic's been very slow, and as a result, our sales have dramatically declined. In fact, in the last two months, we failed to turn a profit. Now, unless this trend reverses, we're in serious trouble. I've called this meeting because we need to rethink our strategies. So I want to hear from all of you. I want to hear what your thoughts are, what do you think the problem is, and what we can do to fix it. Gentlemen, I open up the floor to you. What are your thoughts? I think we need to introduce some new types of toys. We're constantly introducing new toys. Well, more specifically, I'm thinking we should form our own research team to develop toys exclusive to our company. I like that. Good idea. That's yeah. something we can definitely look into. That definitely worked across the... Okay, what were you about to say? Well, I hope I don't make this meeting all about him. But I was going to mention Gary and his toy shop across the street. That new toy he's invented, it's become very popular. I just knew his name was going to be brought up at some point during this discussion. Look, fellas, let's keep the conversation focused here. I don't care what games or gimmicks Gary has, or if it's garnered a little business his way. I don't think it's going to last. But we need to make changes here, so this store will last. Now, with all due respect, Mr. Tolman, I think it's a great idea that we examine what's going on over there at Gary's store. He's our main competition. Okay, you want to talk about Gary? You want to talk about Gary? Lay it on me. What's he doing that we're not doing? Well, there is the fact that he did develop that game, and it's really taken off for him. We already established that. Do you gentlemen actually think that I haven't asked myself that question? Why is Gary gaining business and we're slowing down? I pondered that question many times over the last several months. OK, so he's got a new game. Big deal. I've been in business long enough to know. A new game, a new concept, a new toy. It's not going to carry your store for the long haul. It might boost your sales temporarily, but not month after month after month. I don't think that game alone is doing it. No. <clears throat> There's something else going on over there. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your great blessings and provisions through the store. I pray for continued prosperity for the store, Lord, but more important, I pray that I'll continue to represent you well to my customers. And Lord, I pray for Mr. Tolman. Now, I know he doesn't want anything to do with me, but Lord, I pray for the opportunity to talk to him and get to know him. And I pray for the opportunity to witness to him. Lord, I pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll have to come back tomorrow. No, it's about something more personal. Who are you? You don't remember me? I used to make deliveries here a while back. Yeah, you do look familiar. That was a couple years ago, right? Yeah. What do you want to talk to me about? It's about that shipment you never received a couple years ago. Is it okay if I talk to you guys for a minute? Yeah, Lauren, yeah. what's up? 
Well, I don't know if my mom has mentioned this to you guys, but we're planning on moving in a few weeks. Oh, no, she hadn't. Why are you guys moving? Uh, well, she landed a job out west, and she starts in three weeks. Oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. So you excited to move? Not really. Oh, why not? Well, for a few reasons. I'm going to be changing schools, moving away from all my friends, right. and I'm really going to miss everyone here at church, you guys especially. Well, you and your mom are going to come back and visit occasionally, right? I hope so, but she's going to be really busy at first, and we're going to be so far away, I don't know how often we'll make it back. Right. We hope all goes well for you and your mom. We'll definitely be praying for you. Thanks. And hey, you keep on reaching out to Mr. Tolman. My effort might have failed, but if God can use anyone to reach him, it's definitely you. Well, I appreciate your confidence in me, Lauren, but it sounds like you failed in your effort. Hey. You gave the guy a friendly gesture, and you sang part of a song that had some very meaningful lyrics. You never know. You could have had a bigger impact than you realize. Hmm. You might be right. You always have the wisest words to say to me. I'm really going to miss you guys. Excuse me, miss, do you work here? Yes, I do. I'm Mr. Tillman's assistant. Ah, oh, perfect. Would you mind showing me to him? I need to speak with him. Actually, he's in a meeting right now, but if it's business related, I would make an appointment with him. He doesn't like people just dropping in on him. Well, maybe you could answer a few questions for me. Sure, I'll try. Uh, first off, I saw the sign out there. When is the store officially supposed to close? Well, it close next month. That is, unless a miracle happens. What kind of miracle? All I know is that the store is having major financial issues, so I suppose if they were able to come up with the right amount of money in time, they could keep the store running. Well, how much do they need? That I don't know. They don't give me that kind of information. Well, do you have any idea why the store has gone downhill so badly? He asked Mr. Tolman. He'll deny the reason why, but... Everyone here, including Mr. Tolman, knows that it's because of Gary's toy shop right across the street. Anyone who's not blind can see that his shop is constantly busy now, and ours has just declined in business. Um, I see. Do you have any other questions for me? No, I think that's it. You've been very helpful. What was your name? Michelle. Oh, well, thanks for all your help, Michelle. You're welcome. Oh, could I have your name as well? I mean, that way I can let Mr. Tolman know that you wanted to speak with him. Uh, I'd rather remain anonymous. But if you want, just tell him a concerned friend stopped by. Susan, believe me, I know this sounds crazy, but I really believe this is something that God is leading me to do. Why would God lead you to do this? We're talking about a man who bribed two delivery men to dispose of a shipment that was supposed to go to our store. He was responsible for closing our business. I'm well aware of that, Susan. You don't have to remind me. But our store's open again. And God has blessed it tremendously. Whatever evil intentions Mr. Tolman had, God had different plans. So now you think it's God's plan to save Mr. Tolman's business? Yes, I do. I don't understand it one bit. But it sounds like I'm not going to be able to talk you out of it, am I? No. Huh. Explain to me one thing. Why so much? Why that amount? The thing is, Mr. Tolman's store is a lot larger than ours, so he needs more capital to run it. And it's not like we're hurt for cash, Susan. God has blessed a toy shop far and above anything we even thought possible. You gotta figure there's a reason he's done that. A reason, sure. But save our main competition and the man who has set out to destroy our business? I thought you were gonna stop fighting me on this. I'm sorry, I won't bring it up again. Susan. 
I'm really gonna need you to support me on this. And I need you to help me. What do you need me to do? Well, I need you to drop off the check. Well, Kaylee, don't you think they're gonna recognize me? I don't think so. Not if you give it to his assistant, Michelle. She didn't recognize me. Okay. I'll do it. Just walk me through it. What do you need me to do? So you think my niece is really gonna like this, huh? Oh, you betcha. Okay. All right, thank you. Take care. All right. Oh, there she is. Who is it? Come in. What is it, Michelle? I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Tolman, but a lady just dropped off this envelope for you. Who's it from? I don't know. She didn't say her name. But she did say it was a gift for you. A gift? Is this some kind of sick joke, Michelle? Did the other employees put you up to this? No, not at all, Mr. Tolman. All I know about that is what I told you. Wait, let me get this straight. Some anonymous lady just walked up to you and gave this to you. Yeah, that's what happened. So what is it? Well, I doubt it's real. But it's a check for $200,000 made out to Tolman Toys. Wow. Yeah, there's no doubt this is some practical joke. I don't know anyone who'd give me that kind of money. What if it is real? Well, that's another fishy thing about this check. $200,000 is exactly the amount that I was trying to get a loan for to keep the store open. So yeah, it would be some miracle if this is real and exactly the amount that we need. I'll be back later, Michelle. Make sure you take down any messages for me. Where are you going? To the bank. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. All right. Where's the boy's father? He doesn't have one. It's my understanding that his father left him and his mother when he was a baby. So what's going to happen to him? Well, the state will take him and put him in foster care. Hopefully they'll find him a good home. Hey, Michelle. Hey. Any messages for me? Uh, yes, you had a couple. I wrote them down for you. Okay. So what did the bank say? They said they need a couple of days to confirm if it's real. Mm. But I do have a task for you to do in the meantime. I want you to find out where that check came from. Here, I made a copy of it. See what you can do to trace its origins. Okay. Let me know what you find out by the end of the day. I don't know where else to look. I, honestly, all I'm getting are dead ends. Well, keep up the search and let me know when you found something. 
I'll try to come up with another angle to hit it from. Well, the item is still in the box. Yes, ma'am, I realize that, but our return policy is final. I'm sorry. Okay, then. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye. There you are, Michelle. Did you figure anything out? Nothing. Oh, don't throw the towel in quite yet. You'll find her. I, on the other hand, did get some very good news today. The bank called me. It turns out that the check is real. You know what this means, right? The store's not closing down. I need you to double your efforts in finding out where that check came from. I need you to find out who that lady is and why she gave me this money. All right? Anything. You hear something, give me a call. That gave me the envelope the other day. Yeah, that was me. Well, could you tell me why you gave that money to Mr. Tolman? It wasn't entirely from me. What do you mean? Did you see the shop I just came out of? Yeah, Gary's toy shop. Right. Well, Gary's my husband. He and I own the toy store, and he's the one who gave Mr. Tolman the money. What? There's no way, Michelle. There's got to be some mistake. I don't think so, Mr. Tolman. She seemed perfectly genuine in what she was saying, and I see no reason why she would lie about it. That just doesn't seem to make sense. Why would Gary, of all people, give me that money? I don't know. Did she give you any kind of clue as to why he would do it? No, all she said was that she was confused about why he did it too, and if we wanted to find out, we should ask Gary himself. I... I can't do that. Why not? <laughs> You've confronted Gary before, haven't you? And now he's giving you this very generous gift? Why would you not want to at least ask him why he did it? There's some things between Gary and I that complicate matters. Well, they didn't seem to complicate matters on Gary's end. I don't know what I would say to the man if I went over there. You could start with saying thanks. Could you leave me alone? I need to think about this. Can I help you with something? May I come in for a minute? Sure. Come on. So, what can I do for you, Mr. Tolman? I want to know why you did it, Gary. Did what? You know what I'm talking about. The money. <sighs> How'd you find out? Well, I'll tell you, but I think the far more important question right now is, why did you give me that money? Well, it might take me a while to explain it. Well, I've got time if you do. You have no idea what that money means to me. My store is my life. I don't know what I would have done had it closed down. Thanks to you and your gift, I'm not going to find out. In a way, you've saved my life. I wouldn't go that far. But 
I was being led by another who can truly save your life. What do you mean? I mean, giving you that money, it wasn't my idea. God put it in my heart to give that money to you. Either way, Gary, I'm just glad you gave me that money. What makes you so sure that God told you to do it? Oh, it's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> it's, it's something you have to experience in order to fully understand. But once somebody accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior, a whole new relationship is opened up between them and God. And so through prayer and the Holy Spirit, God made it clear to me that's what he wanted me to do. Hmm. There was a time in my life that I probably would have believed everything that you're telling me right now. I did believe in God. Well, this much I can tell you for sure, Mr. Toman. God has not forgotten about you. And it's no coincidence that you and I have crossed paths. Or that he has put in me the desire and the call to help you in your time of need. Let me ask you something, Mr. Toman. Who is Jesus Christ to you? I'm not so sure how you want me to answer that. Just be honest. How do you view Jesus? Well, I believe he was a good guy who lived 2,000 years ago. I know we're celebrating his birthday with it being Christmas and all, but I'm not so sure what that has to do about you giving me that money. It actually has everything to do with why I gave you that money. Without the grace of God or the salvation I have through my faith in Jesus Christ, I never would have given you $200,000. The thought never would have even crossed my mind. And logically speaking, why would it to give $200,000 to my biggest rival? and a man who bribed a delivery guy, which ultimately led me to close my store down. You know about the bribe? Yes. That's the difference Christ has made in my life. He's given me grace. And he's led me to be gracious towards you. Is that what you call what you did for me? Grace? It's not just about what I did for you. I'm just an instrument in the hands of God. What is important is God's free gift of salvation he extends to all through his grace. And that includes you, Mr. Tolman. You know, Gary, I'd, I'd like to experience this, but I don't think God would accept me. Not with everything that I've done in my life. That's the beauty of grace. No one deserves salvation. But God already loves you. And Jesus already paid for your sins on the cross. And that free gift of salvation is right there waiting for you to accept, Mr. Tolman. The question is, will you accept it? How, Gary? How do I accept it? Will you pray with me and ask Jesus Christ to save you? this time. Believe me, I wish I could. I really missed you guys. And I know my mom would love to see you. 
But she's been so busy, we haven't been able to make it back over. Oh, I understand. But look at you. You're all grown up. You look yeah. terrific. Thank you. And look at you. I see you guys have another one on the way. Yep. Number two. And <laughs> she is due in March. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So what else is new? I mean, what are you guys doing here, for example? What happened to your old shop? Well, I can answer both those at the same time. What happened to the old shop is it closed down. And the reason we're here is because we're standing in our new shop. Wow, I didn't expect to hear that. Well, why did your old shop close down? Closed down to make way for this new one. But how'd you acquire the property from Mr. Tolman? Oh, no, no, we, we didn't acquire the property from Mr. Tolman. Then how'd you manage to get it? And what do the initials G and J stand for whoa, on the sign? Oh, hey, boy, you're quick with the multiple questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Well, the answers are in the initials. The G stands for Gary, and the J... J stands for... Honey, anything you want? Yeah, yeah, no, no, every, everything's fine. Uh, listen, Susan, can you walk with me for a minute? There's something I want to show you. Okay. We'll be back in a few minutes, Lauren. Excuse Maybe me. you could look around for a few and we'll come find you when we're done? Okay, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Great. Wait right here, it won't be long. Okay. I'm so confused. Why did you do that? While we were talking out there, I realized she has no idea that Jim is my business partner. So I thought it'd be great if he goes out there and surprises her. That's a really good idea, Gary. I know. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. Mr. Tolman, what are you doing here? I work here. I thought Gary owned this place. Well, he does half of it. So you work for Gary? No, we're partners. Partner? I thought you two were rivals. We were. So what changed? Everything. I'm not the same man that you met before. I'm a follower of Christ now. I understand if that's a bit of a shock to you. I guess I'm just overwhelmed. I prayed for you so many times over the past couple years. Thank you. I needed it. So how did God get a hold of your heart? Well, God worked through the man who would become my business partner. That's amazing. God took your biggest rival to reach you. You know, Gary wasn't the only one that God was working through. Who else? You, Lauren. It might seem insignificant to you, but I believe God was working through you when you and your caroling group came and sang that song for me that one night. Really? I mean, I was just trying to be nice. I did hope the message from the song had an impact on you. It did, more than you realize. You see, my mother was a Christian, and she used to sing that song for me when I was a young boy. She died when I was nine years old. And I remember, I became very bitter and angry towards God when that happened. And then, you came along and sang that song to me. And all those memories came rushing back to me. And I just knew he wanted me to open up my heart to him. Are you okay? Yeah, it's just so amazing. I didn't think our singing made a difference or an effect on you whatsoever. It's so wonderful to hear. You know, Mr. Tolman, I never thought I would say this, but it's really nice to see you again. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too.